Hi guys, Mr. Robeson here. Welcome back. This is 8.3. Now that we've gone over the preliminary stuff for a hypothesis test for means, we're going to put it all together and do our four-step process just like we did with proportions, state, plan, do, and conclude in our four boxes. So here they are, our four boxes. Aren't they just beautiful? So the first thing we do is, well, we draw a big X on our paper if it's not already there. I think it's already there on your homework assignments, but sometimes you may have to write that out. Uh, first thing we're going to do is in this box, we're going to state some things. We're going to define what mu stands for. It's always the true mean, and then we fill it in with some context, whatever we're talking about. We state our hypothesis. Our null hypothesis will be that the mean is equal to some number. Our alternative hypothesis will either be that it's greater than, less than, or not equal to that same number. All right, then we're going to list anything we know. So we've already listed the mean. We're going to list the standard deviation. We're going to list their sample size. We're going to state what our sample mean is. And we're probably going to state that alpha equals 0 0.05 unless we're told otherwise. Then over in the plan, we're actually going to do our test. The test that we're doing here is called a one sample Z test for mean. All right, so we're going to have to have a random sample just like before. We're going to have to have a normal sampling distribution. Now we can get that from having a normal population. We can get that from having a sample size over 30, greater than or equal to 30, or we can do a graph and we can look for no outliers or strongly skewed. Um, for this class, we're pretty much going to stick with just our sample size is greater than 30. So as long as we say our sample size is greater than 30, then the central limit theorem will kick in and tell us that we have a normal distribution. All right. And our last condition is just like before independence, 10 times our sample size needs to be less than the population size. Not greater than, guys, less than. There were some mistakes on that last time. All right, now we do have a shortcut for this just like we had a shortcut for peas. If we go to stat on our calculator, go over twice to the test menu, it's the first option, Z-test. And we're mostly going to be doing this with stats. We're not dealing with lists of numbers. We actually have the statistics that we're writing up here. So we're gonna choose stats, and we're just gonna fill in some stuff. Like they're gonna ask, what's our null hypothesis? What's your standard deviation? What's your sample mean? Your sample size? Your alternative hypothesis direction? And then we select calculate, just press enter once. That was a mistake a lot of people kept making as they were pressing it more than once. It disappears. Just press it once, and then we just need to record the p-value. Or we can do it the long way like we did in 8.2. Either way is fine. All right, and then we do our conclusion. If P is low, and by low we mean less than 0 0.05, then we reject the null hypothesis. So P is low, reject the ho, and then we state that we have significant evidence for whatever the alternative is. All right, if P is greater than or equal to 0 0.05, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. We do not have significant evidence for the alternative at that point. All right. So we just have two examples of this going forward. So here is our first example. So in 2020, in the 2020 school year, a typical high school student missed a mean of 8.4 days of school with a standard deviation of 3.2 days. This year, a random sample of 40 high school students is selected and it is found that they have missed a mean of 9.4 days of school. Is there, a significant, is there significant evidence that the number of school days missed by high school students has increased? All right, so first things first, we are talking about the true mean days of school missed by high school students. All right. Our null hypothesis is that the mean has not changed from the previous year, in which case it was 8.4. Our alternative is that the mean has increased. So mu is greater than 8.4. And let's see, we've got some other information here. We've got a standard deviation of 3.2. We've got a sample mean of 8.4 or 9.4. So 9.4. And we've got an N of a sample size of 40. And let's see, we don't have alpha, so we'll put 0 0.05. We are doing a one sample Z test for a mean. All right, we have to check three conditions for that. First thing, do we have a random sample? 
All right, well, looks like it says it right there, random sample, so check, we've got that down. Number two, our sample size, n is 40, 40 is greater than 30, so the central limit theorem kicks in and tells us that we have a normal sampling distribution, so we've got that as normal. And number three, independence. So 10 times our sample size gives us 400, and that is less than all high school students. So check, we're good to go there. So now we come over here and now we can do this the long way or we can do this on our calculator. If we're gonna do this on our calculator, it is just called a Z test. And that's the way I'm gonna do it, is the calculator method. So let's see, gotta be able to see all my stats here. So we'll turn that on, we'll go to stat. We're gonna arrow over twice to get to test. And there it is, number one, Z test. So just press enter. All right, we're working with statistics here because we have the data or we have the, the raw numbers worked out. So 8.4 is our null hypothesis. Our standard deviation is 3.2 days. Our X bar is 9.4. Our sample size was 40. And our alternative hypothesis is that we are greater than. So here's the greater than symbol right there. It's already highlighted on mine. All right, arrow over, press enter on that. And then go to calculate and just press enter. And we want the P value. All right, so there's our P.02. All right, so now we'll go over here and we'll say 0 0.02 is less than 0 0.05. So our P is low. So we are going to reject the hoe. So we have significant evidence. that the true mean is now greater than 8.4 days. All right, looks like more people are getting absent. All right, but that's how we do those problems. All right, let's try one more. Looks like we're working with cows here. So a typical beef cow weighs a mean of 1,210 pounds with a standard deviation of 95 pounds. A rancher wants to see if the mean weight of his cows has changed significantly. He takes a random sample of 50 cows and finds that they have a mean weight of 1,190 pounds. Does he have significant evidence that the mean cow weight has changed? All right, so in our first box, we're gonna define our, our mu. Mu for, for cows. It's the true mean weight of a cow. I guess it'd be an adult cow that's ready for become become steak. All right, our null hypothesis is that the mean equals 1,210 pounds. Our alternative hypothesis, let's see, we looked for change significantly. So we'll say our mean does not equal 1,210. And we're gonna write down any other information we have. So we have that the standard deviation is 95. We have that we are selecting 50 cows, so that's our N. We have the sample mean of those 50 cows was 1,190, and we're gonna use an alpha of 0 0.05. All right, so we are doing a one sample Z test for mean. We have a random sample. That is the first thing we have to check. And sure enough, I think I underlined it somewhere, random sample, there it is. So that checks out. Number two, our N was 50. 50 is definitely greater than 30. So by the central limit theorem, we get that this is normal. So that checks out. And number three, independence. 10 times 50 is 500. Hopefully that is less than all cows or all cows on this ranch. We'll just go with all cows for now, but that should work out. There's more than 500 cows out there. Now we're going to our calculator and we're gonna do our Z test. If we were to do this by hand, we'd have to do two-sided. So that's why we like the Z test, it does it for us. It takes care of the two-sidedness already. So we go to Z test. We've got 1210 for our null hypothesis. Our standard deviation is 95 pounds, a little bigger. Our sample mean is 1190. 
our sample size was 50, and we want to see change. So not equal to is the one we want. That's the first one. And calculate. And then we just want our p-value. There it is, 0.1365. So our p-value, we just need the first two digits, 0.13. All right, so it looks like it's a lot lower, like it's 20 pounds lower, but apparently that is not significant enough here because 0.13 is greater than 0.05, so we do not reject the hoe. We don't have significant evidence that the mean has changed. All right, so the mean is still probably pretty close to 1210. It has not significantly changed. All right, and if you're wondering, there's where the certain parts of stakes come from. All right, and that is it for 8.3. So go ahead and submit your notes online and get started on your homework, and we'll be back with 8.4.